HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we'll take you around to some of the many festivities surrounding the upcoming Boston Marathon. We'll take you to the Girl Scouts Troop 65040 Edible Book Festival, plus a whole lot more. But first, for the 26th year, John Hancock brought elite Kenyan runners to Elmwood School as part of the Scholars and Stars program. For the 26th year, John Hancock brought some of the elite Kenyan athletes to Elmwood School as part of the Scholars and Stars program. Prior to the event, some of the students studied Kenyan culture and had a chance to meet with some of the biggest marathon stars Kenya has to offer. Here's a look at another fun-filled day at Elmwood. You having a good time today at Elmwood, meeting the students? Yeah, we have a great time to talk with them, teaching them, showing them what is in Africa. So we are in Kenya, so we are to a sacred time. Yeah. You like all the uh, work they've done uh, studying your culture? Yeah, even they were telling them the culture, how do we do in Kenya? So it was a great time. Yeah. Hi. What's your name? Peter. Peter. How do you like uh, meeting the runners today? I like it. Did you uh, learn? I don't a lot like it. Culture? I love it. What? Did you learn a lot studying about their culture? Yeah. Excellent. Is there someone that you like talking to the most when the runners? Um, Philmon. I drew a poster of him over there. Hi. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I got a second tip. Me too. Oh, look at that. I'm on the news. <laughs> Ah, it's very amazing. We like the work that the kids have uh, drawn. It's very wonderful. Especially the way they have uh, drawn the sketches. We see that it resembles us very well and the way we used to run. So they are really fast in learning and drawing the right uh, uh, pictures. So we like it very much. Mm. Excellent. Is this your first time in Elmwood? Yeah, it's, very, it's our first time in Elmwood and even in the United States, so the first time. And we are very much happy that we have been invited also. We have seen many great things that uh, our welcoming people are here and very, very, are now friendly. So we like it very much. Are you ready for uh, the big day on Monday? Yes, we are very much okay because we have been preparing for had enough time there in Kenya to prepare well for this uh, big day that we have been waiting for so long. Great to be back with you. It's great to see you still hanging out here. Um, I just look at, at the excitement on their faces and you can hear the kids behind us. Uh, for the last couple of weeks the teachers really focus on this after they get their, their tests out of the way. And I just had a couple of conversations with some of the teachers and this is just one thing that they will never forget the rest of their lives. I've talked to some of the Hopkinson track and field athletes and they talk about how memorable this whole thing has been to them and it has inculcated in them a love for running and, and the whole sport. So I think it benefits Hopkinton's team. And while I have a second, let me also mention that there are studies out there now that show that memory and focus are improved by running and, and good exercise. If you're a swimmer, that's fine. If you bike, that's great too. But academically, high school kids and college kids do their best among all sports teams in track and field academically. So there's something to this. And it's all great for the kids here. And I can hardly hear myself think right now, Tom. You know, one inside thing to tell all your viewers is I've watched last year in particular, some of the older people who have been here before, men and women, might be their second or third time at Hopkinson, 
and running Boston. They take the first timers aside from Kenya and they tell them all about what's going to happen. And you should see the face of the first timers as they're hearing the story. They love it, they start laughing, you see all their teeth, so they know they're in for a real treat. And uh, for those that don't know, you also broadcast the Boston Marathon. Are uh, you on the call again this year? I do. I'll be doing the international telecast and co-hosting that as we go out all over the world. We're, we're shown all over Africa, all over Europe, um, it's really a, a wide range of Germany, France, I can go on and on. We'll get the Boston Marathon televised, and we'll hear about Hopkinton as well. All right, well, hopefully the rain holds off. Thanks so much. I look forward to it, and it's an honor to be with you guys out here. Please give a Hopkinton welcome to Mr. Stephen Sambo. give an Elmwood shout out to Mr. Philemon Rona. Let's give a cheer in, in Elmwood for Gladys Chichir. to see all kids excited and all, all and make us so happy. And uh, are you ready for the big day? I am, <laughs> yeah, for sure. How was training going, good? Really good, yeah, it has been good. Excellent, and uh, do you always just look forward to coming to this event? The kids, I know, just uh, love to meet the runners. Always love to scam and see those smiley faces out here uh, the day before the race, or like this, uh, like few days before the race, so it's good. Yeah, it brings back a lot of memories yeah. from being in Elmwood. Just so much fun, just looking back and seeing all the fun that they could have now. And it's really inspiring to see like people that have made it to the, the big stage of running, because often running isn't very uh, yeah, we popular only, sport. Yeah, we only do like dual meets and stuff. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Did yeah, they give Did they give you any tips at all? Uh, have fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Always have fun. Dance, yeah. dance hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, and how's the track season going so far? I think we're just going good. <laughs> going going good. good. Yeah, we had first meet yesterday. First off? Yeah. First meet, first off? Yeah, yeah. first nice. meet yesterday. It was, it was tough, it was cold, but we did it. And we yeah, had fun. It, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was so exciting. There was so much going on. It was so cool to see the runners too. Just like I remember it from third grade. So cool. And how was it meeting these uh, elite runners? Did they give you any tips? <laughs> um, not tips, but they were really funny and really personable. Like you see them running, and you're like, "Oh my God, they're like superhuman!" But they're just like us. They just can run really fast. Yeah, I remember when I was in third grade, it was like the coolest thing. Everyone coming here, like to Hopkinton, my hometown, it was so cool. Yeah, it was so cool to see all their faces light up as they entered each room. Like every single time the announcer was like, "Oh, and they've won this and that," they were just so excited for them, and it's really exciting to see that. All right, and how's the season going so far? Good, cross country's over, so that's fall, but now we're into track, and it's been going well. We just had our first meet yesterday, and we won, so that was great. Put on a smile for the camera. 
camera. Be on the lookout for much more from the Elmwood Kenya Day festivities. I recently caught up with Hopkinton resident Denise Antaki, who has been training hard to run the Boston Marathon for the Hopkinton High School class of 2018. The uh, training going so far? Training's been good. No injuries. Um, a few uh, twisted ankles. Uh, I got lost once uh, in Boston, but luckily someone uh, found me. And uh, I think I'll be ready. Now it's looking like uh, rainy weather. Obviously, I'm sure you'd uh, prefer a clear day. Clear, cold day in the 30s. But I've never run in rain. If it rains out, I usually uh, skip running. So it'll be a new challenge. But it's New England and you never know what might happen. Absolutely. <laughs> and if uh, somebody wanted to donate to your uh, run, which goes to the class of 2018, how can they do so? Um, they can donate uh, to the fund, to my fundraising campaign at uh, www.gofundme backslash Hiller's class of 2018. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome back to HCAM News. This past week, Girl Scout Troop 65040 hosted their annual Edible Book Festival at the Hopkinton Public Library. Here's a look. Girl Scout Troop 65040 hosted the annual Edible Book Festival. Participants had the chance to try to earn a top three spot in three different categories, adult, children, and family. Here's a look at the great work. Yeah, so we started this event um, three years ago for our bronze award, and it was a really big turnout, and um, pretty much here you make an edible um, creation that has to like do with the book, like you represent a book through food. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And we started it because we um, did our um, bronze award on um, uh, like getting people excited about reading and people enjoying reading. We're Girl Scout Troop 65040 of Eastern Mass, and um, we have um, like eight girls, and pretty much so we're a cadet troop. So um, it's our second year being cadets, and we have one more year. And this year we're really um, happy because we're working on our Silver Award project, um, and we're doing that on saving the bees. We actually have an event coming up on May 11th. Um, uh, it's a, we're screening the Bee Movie. In third place from the children's section was the Click Clack Move by Madeline Ritterbush. Um, the second place, this, the second place winner was Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix by Hannah Connors. And um, the first place for the children oh. was Dragon's Love Tacos by Zombie. 
Mommy Goldfish by Chris Story. And in first place is Chocolate War by Allison Audrey Morla. Becca PZ of Belmont, Massachusetts recently completed her second 777 challenge. Becca ran seven marathons on seven continents in seven days. She recently spoke about her experience at Hopkinton Middle School. This past winter for her second time, marathon runner Becca PZ out of Belmont, Massachusetts completed seven marathons on seven different continents in seven days. Becca became the first female to complete the 777 Challenge in 2016. Her next big event is the upcoming Boston Marathon. She spoke to students at Hopkinton Middle School about her experience completing a marathon on seven different continents. You guys are so lucky to be living in Hopkinton. This is so awesome. I'm so inspired to come out. Who's going to come watch the Boston Marathon? All of you? Thank you. Um, so. I, in 2016, I was given the opportunity to make history, to be the first American female to run seven marathons on seven continents in seven days. So I love to run, I love to travel. I thought, I'm gonna give it a shot, I have nothing to lose, and I went for it and I did it. So I was given the opportunity two years later, just this recent February, to do it again. And it was a big decision to make to do it again because everything went so well the first time and I was able to, to win all seven marathons. And it was a big decision and I said to my daughter for the second time what do you think about this and she said yeah mom she's 10 years old she, we live in Belmont and she said I believe in you let's make it happen you can do it I studied the courses the locations everything that I needed to know um, this time I was given a opportunity by Tom Brady's company TB12 they said we heard what you're doing come out we will train you and we'll help you cross we'll help you physically and mentally to, to run 777. So I thought if it works for Tom Brady, it most certainly will work for me. So I'm gonna give it a shot. And I went out to Foxborough and I was working really, really hard with them and they met me at the finish line and it was so awesome. So one of the things that Tom Brady's company did was document my journey. So I will tell you about it and I'll show you the video that they made for me. My and message is to the kids is dream big, believe in yourself and take chances. All right, and um, can you talk about um, how long it took you to run these seven marathons. How many days were you away? I was gone in total for 10 days. So the first time that I took on the 777, I was gone for 16. So we chartered a plane this time around and it was much easier and a faster transition each time. And um, I understand you're training about uh, seven days a week. Um, what's that like? I mean, do you ever feel uh, pains from all that running? <laughs> so I feel very fortunate to have running the running community behind me and, and everybody's always willing to go for a run with me and but I I really say listen to your body if something doesn't feel right or you're hurt or something back off until until you feel better and and to show up 
not finishing is not an option. So prepare your mind, study the course, and put in the work. And you mentioned you've been running marathons since you were 17 years old. Off the top of your head, can you think about how many marathons in total you've completed? I know for sure I've done 64 marathons, and my current goal is to finish a marathon in all 50 states, and I've done 34 states. But I've done 17 Boston marathons. My favorite day of the year, I run the Boston Marathon every year. What makes the Boston Marathon so special? The crowd support, you know, in, in the Red Sox updates and Wellesley Screen Tunnel, the right on Boylston, left on Hereford, right on Hereford, left on Boylston. It's, it's, there's nothing in the world like crossing the finish line in the Boston Marathon. Is the training going good? I know the weather has been a little wacky out there. This weather's ridiculous. It's April 6th and it's going to snow today. That's that's just so random. So, <laughs> But come Boston Marathon Day, Patriots Day, you never know what you're going to get, so you might as well train through everything. All right, and I understand you have a foundation as well. Can you talk a little bit about that? The Becca Pizzi Foundation, last year we gave three graduate, we gave three scholarships to graduating seniors, and it was my way to give back to the community, and I partnered with the Belmont Boosters and Belmont Savings Bank, and to have this race, to do what I love and watch the community come together for the kids' one-mile run, and they all get shirts and medals, and then the 5K, we all get medals and shirts again, and, and it's such a fun day for the community, and it makes me feel good to give back to the community. So there's tons of, it's a lot of fun. It's a fun day, April 29th. So if you do come out, come say hello to me, and I'd love to see you there. All right, and I guess the good thing is with this uh, wild weather that you've pretty much ran in all elements, so you'll be ready. I have no, no excuses. How could I how could possibly complain about being cold when I ran a marathon in Antarctica? I can't. All right, so... Uh... Another great program here by uh, Desire to Inspire today. Uh, can you talk about what Desire to Inspire is all about? Desire to Inspire is fi finding ways to inspire our students to set goals and reach for those goals, get out of their comfort zones. And um, can you talk about uh, when Desire to Inspire uh, started? Yeah, we started right after the marathon bombing as a way to keep uh, the positive spirit of the Boston Marathon alive with our students here in town. Um, and so it's just evolved from being how are we going to keep that positive spirit alive to curriculum pieces that are all tied to the marathon, running events, guest speakers for our students. Teachers go to travel to Greece every year and they're supported by the 26.2 Foundation and the Examine Life program now. Um, they bring their, the, what they learn while they're in Greece and bring it back and put that into their curriculum as well. And I understand there's a lot of different um, programs and also uh, some activities going on surrounding Desire to Inspire uh, every year towards the marathon. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the activities that are going on around Desire to Inspire this year? So right now, this is our only event actually this year, but the last two or three years, we've actually had a whole school 2.62, and the entire school goes out and runs 2.62 miles. We're taking a little break this year. The weather's been a little funky, so it's been a little hard to schedule all those things. So. All right, well, um, can you uh, just talk about where people can find more information about Desire to Inspire? So also can, they can go right to the middle school uh, webpage, and there's links right on the webpage to Desire Inspire, all the curriculum pieces, because we've uh, it's been presented on the national level and at the state level, so other schools can go and use our curriculum across the world. So it's, it's, a, great, it's a great program. All right, thank you very much. Thanks. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, April 13th at 5 p.m., singer and songwriter Deborah Rocha performs her music encompassing her many years worth of experiences on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Bred to do dirty work deep down in holes, picking off hedgehogs and rabbits and voles, harboring deep within their tiny souls a burning desire for the stage. And at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts are on location talking with Lorelei Lotvin and Mary Holden of the Whitehall Artisans in a new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. When you pull it out, you know, melt it evenly, pull it out into a log form, like a, like a pencil, sure. maybe, and then slice it, each, each slice will have the image in it, and then you can apply that image to the bead. Yeah. I've seen so, you work, and it's intense. I mean, you've got, it's, like, yeah. it's technical, it's creative, obviously, and technical. You have to know, clearly, mm. how to use the tools. And On Monday, April 16th at 7.30 p.m., Mary Arnott talks with Hopkinton State House Representative Karen Spilka on a new episode of All About Hopkinton. 
it's going to be money that's going to be put to good use and public safety, clean energy, and some other things. So, right, right, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot in there. Thank you. Yeah. So there are ways to sometimes get direct some funds for Hopkinton, either it be the DCAM or like the budget. We mentioned the budget. Um, I was able to put $100,000 for Hopkinton. And at 8.30 p.m., Dr. Catherine Hughes talks with medical professionals about medical care during serious illness and how to get the treatment best for you on a new episode of Physician Focus. That everybody knows is true for every single one of us is we're mortal. But Americans don't like to talk about that. And then if we've never talked about, like with your dad, um, about what's important to him between now and the end, but this really isn't primarily about dying. It's about between now and that future time, how can your life be as good as it's possible to be? On Tuesday, April 17th at 8 p.m., the town gathers for a public look into the continued growth and development of our town on a brand new HCAM TV special. On Wednesday, April 11th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Appropriations Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And we have a lot coming up on HCAM Ed with the Hopkinton High School Talent Show, as well as the Elmwood School Kenyon Runners event and the Hopkinton Athletic Fields Forum. If you want to know more about all of HCAM's shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to take a look at upcoming events in town and the latest happenings throughout our community. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day.